But what chance do you give yourselves of getting the job done in overturning a 3-0 deficit in this tie with Barcelona? I think um, we've obviously had decent results this season where we've scored more than, more than three goals. So I think being at home obviously helps us. We've got the fans behind us. Um, I think there's still that sense of belief. Um, we know obviously it's going to be really hard. It's not going to be a walk in the park. I think everyone's just got to be realistic, but we've, we've definitely still got that belief um, within ourselves in the changing room that anything's possible, especially at Anfield, and hopefully we'll be able to, to produce one of them, them special nights here. If you thought of the time, looking at Liverpool's performance in that game at the Camp Nou was that they didn't deserve to lose 3 0, but there's every chance they could have lost 4 or 5 0 come the end. Everybody that was leaving that ground in the first leg, nobody was thinking, oh, Liverpool could turn this around. Even though, even though at the time, I remember writing a little thing in my little analysis piece saying, there's no way Liverpool will give up, though, because they've got this far, so why would they stop believing now? Liverpool have had this fantastic season. Um, they'd lost one league game all campaign. Uh, they, they'd looked really good in Europe. A fantastic results against uh, Bayern Munich, and then obviously the, the disposed of, of Porto. And it just looked like they weren't going to win anything. It looked like they were not going to somehow come out of the season with, with anything tangible to, to to show for it. And it was just, it was inconceivable that Liverpool wouldn't finish with one of these trophies because of the way they played and how good they'd been. And to to see that there, in a game that they certainly didn't deserve to lose 3-0, but at the end they were quite lucky not to lose by 4 or 5 it was yeah, it was it was, it was a low point. The, the trip had been fantastic. Um, you know, the night before we'd watched Ajax turn over Tottenham, and, and you're thinking, well, I tell you what, you know, we've got a real chance here. If we go through here, it's, it's Ajax in, in the final. Um, but you know, as you were leaving the stadium, as I say, it was it was, it was very disheartening, and uh, some real questions being asked. Look, the, the, the situation is with the 3-0 at Barcelona is obviously not uh, exactly the situation you want to have before you play the second leg. But um, And you cannot play against Barcelona and, 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 and tell the world, watch this. It's likely and it's possible that it will be the last Champions League game for this campaign, so let's, let's celebrate it. With our legs, with our lungs, with good decisions, with sensational atmosphere and all that stuff, and then we'll see what's the outcome. I wasn't going to go. I had the day booked off work because I was going to go for a bite to eat with my friends, uh, go for a few pints and then go to the game. I cancelled the day off work and I wasn't actually planning on going. Uh, and then I remembered that I actually had a ticket that I had to give to um, fellow Echo writer Kiever O'Neill. In the, in the lead up to the game, I remember just like on the day I was off work and I'm laying on the couch and my mum was like, when are you going to start getting ready? And I was like, oh, well, now. I was like, I just don't feel like going. Um, but you kind of had this, I just had this feeling and I hardly ever get it because usually I'll have, you know, everything ready to go, lined up and I'm out the door, can't wait to get to the match. But I just had a little bit of, I don't know, just something in me that was just telling me, oh, this is probably not going to end, are you really hoping it will? Um, but anyway, you know, you, you get gone, get over the stadium. I remember seeing like, Barcelona fans draped in Catalonia flags and Barcelona scarves and you just kind of they were like so optimistic and obviously just they just must have thought this is it like we're gonna get one because obviously they put that tweet out and it's come back to haunt them heavily because we almost had nothing to lose because we we'd already almost lost it. I had no choice really I had to be safe to give it the ticket so I thought well I'm at Anfield now so I might as well go in the ground the team sheet and obviously you know you, you look at the front three of Rigi, Shakiri's playing, Mane, uh, and you think, Oof. you know, without the two the, the two of the big guns you're thinking gonna be more difficult now. I, I I didn't believe at all, especially because there was no Salah and because there was no Firmino. Um I just didn't really see how it was possible to be honest. I didn't think Liverpool had any chance of of getting the result that they needed. But with about 10 minutes to go, five minutes to go, suddenly there was a little bit of a spark and you sensed something. And then when Liverpool scored that first goal, the whole atmosphere then builds from that. So I think scoring the first goal was very crucial. I don't think anything 
was brewing until Divock scored the first goal. Just, just the again the atmosphere in the in the place and the body language of the, the Barker players. It was very strange at that point. They were, I think it was like having a script written. You couldn't have worked it out better. The manager always believes. You can see that in, in the talk he give before we come to the stadium, and that helps. That helps the players believe. And you can see within the game that we believe right in, from the first minute we started well, got a, a good goal, and then from then on kept believing. Every time Messi got the ball, it was just the most petrifying moments of your life. You were just watching him thinking, he's just phenomenal. And I think they had a good four or five chances throughout the game. But obviously, Alisson was just like a blockade. I mean, second half, I mean, Gini went out and twice in the space of three minutes after coming off the bench, he scored to lift the roof off this place. Um, just, just unbelievable. You know, he could sense it. You know, and you look. I'm looking at the Barcelona players, and they didn't fancy it. They they were panicking. They brought they were deep. You could just sense it was in the air. You know, everyone's still going absolutely mental, and I'm getting my phone out, and I'm just texting one of the lads, going, "Who's booking Madrid? Book absolutely anything we're going through." And that was the moment where I realised it was sort of, you know what, book the flights to Madrid. We're going to do this. I've just, I've just looked. I've looked away for a sec. I watch it. I, I still can't believe it. I, I, I think everybody was kind of waiting for something to be ruled out because it's a goal that you just don't see. I would imagine there would be thousands of people in that stadium who did not see that goal or realise exactly what had happened until they got home later that night. It was all down to the vision, ingenuity, and expert execution of Trent Alexander Arnold. You know, half the half the people didn't actually see it. I don't think Klopp saw it. I think he said that himself. Origi's goal was just ridiculous and took you by complete surprise. Trent Alexander Arnold shaped initially like he was going to walk away from the ball to let Shakiri take it, then dart it back, whipped it low towards the six yard box, and there was Origi. And as I turned around, I seen the ball floating in the back of the net, and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was almost like a blare of just you know, euphoria. Absolutely manic celebrations inside this ground. So um, it's just, it's a, it's a difficult one to make sense of. First of all, me being a believer in a Christian, I just always have hope, you know? And second of all, when you look at the team, you have mixture of talent and and just hard work, you know? And, uh, and the fans, we know that's going to be a special night tonight. I remember when George Sefton played Imagine at the end and oh my god, I've, I've never like heard anything like that. Just it was the last song he played, um and it was just you just can't describe it. It was I'm thinking, right, they're all gonna go home now. Nobody moved on the cop. And I just looked down and there's Imagine by John Lennon. And so I just grabbed this thing and bugged on the first track, which was Imagine. And the whole cop took it up and it was a, the most magical moment ever and I just you know, you, that's when I, I feel I'm part of what's going on down there Practically everybody involved at the club felt involved and I think that's what that makes a difference when it when everybody's involved, you know, the supporters felt involved, certainly on that night certainly in, in previous games and in the final itself so that's the kind of thing that Jurgen Klopp's built at Liverpool he, he wants a, a, you know, it's a cliche isn't it, he wants an LFC family but that's what he's got the thing what made it really possible, and I said to the boys before the game, I, I, I don't think it's possible, but because it's you, I think we have a chance. We know that this club is the mix um, of atmosphere, emotion, desire and football quality. You cut off one, it doesn't work. We know that. I've said it before. For me, this club, if I have to describe it, and it's a big heart. And tonight it was obviously like crazy. And last year we really felt we have to go back. <laughs> that was it. After giving, we have to go back. We cannot let it stand like this. That's uh, that's not impo that's not possible. And now we get another chance, and we, we will go for that, of course. But the boys did tonight. When I saw the boys after the game went there, and I saw tears in their eyes and stuff like that. That's and that that's football, and they are professionals, and it's still like this. This club touches you like 
like crazy. It's it's like you you you, you feel much more than others. I don't know. It's in these moments, so it's really great. I, I love it.